Welcome to Columbia Southern University's 2011 Commencement Ceremony. We welcome CSU graduates, family, and friends, and honored guests, faculty, and staff. I hereby declare this 200, 2011 Commencement Ceremony to be open. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Mayor Tony Kennan, Mayor of the City of Orange Beach. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be on uh, this stage to congratulate you and to welcome you. It's truly an honor to be on this stage with Dr. Marilyn Hickey, someone I greatly respect and appreciate all she stands for and what she's done for uh, our country. Um, it's just, I, I went back to school at 25, so I know how hard it is to raise a family, to work, and to pursue a degree. And I truly respect you and congratulate you for accomplish that accomplishment. It's, um, it's somewhat humbling, again, to be here. Um, the city of Orange Beach welcomes you, and for now time, I guess, for the obligatory commercial. You know, we have beautiful beaches here, and uh, I guess most of you know about the oil spill last year and how it humbled us and taught us a lesson. But um, I'm very appreciative of what we went through and it's really funny, we've had so many people coming in to town this year that have never been here before. Most folks, the rest of the country, didn't even know we had beaches and paved roads in Alabama. <laughs> but we do, and we have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. But um, more importantly, we have some of the most beautiful people in the world. And our community, I think, is what truly sets us apart from anybody else on the coast. And I really hope you get to have time and, and enjoy our beaches and our fishing and golf and whatever else you like to do but I hope you get to have time to meet the folks and get to know who we are because again that's what I think separates us from everybody else I also want to thank uh, well I want you to know in my opinion you are part of one of the most distinguished universities in this country and the reason I say that is because I know these folks I know the Mays family I know the employees of Columbia Southern University and they're special. And they put everything they have into helping and serving. And for that, we will always be indebted to them and extremely grateful to have them as a part of the city of Orange Beach. I'm going to go off script just a tad for a little mini testimony. Please take it from someone who was a taker for most of his life and not a giver. You have an opportunity now to redirect your life in any direction you want. Pursuit of the dollar is not joy, peace, or happiness, and contentment. Please understand, I've been there. Serving others, not serving self, is what it's all about. That's where you'll find that joy, peace, and contentment. So I pray that you'll find God's will in your life and direction. I pray that you'll see and find that service just a natural part of where you go from here. But again, thank you for being here. Congratulations. and. I'm easy to find if you need anything, even if you want to call to find out where not to eat. <laughs> Don't eat in Florida. So, uh, but again, thank you very much. Welcome graduates. We are so proud to have you today. It's an honor and a privilege. Uh, when I was 19 years old, my dad, and I started working together and we had the vision and my mom and my brother soon after that graduated from high school and started the family business and our vision was to change people's lives we didn't know how big it would be but now we see that we are changing people's lives through education our faculty and all our staff, we are committed to you and you are the product of over 20 years ago we had this vision 
And we work so hard because we're just ordinary people with an extraordinary um, uh, vision and extraordinary just oomph to say, you know what? We can make a difference. We're just ordinary people, but we've got something to give back. And I think that's the theme today is, you know what? You went beyond uh, most of you are in your graduate. Now you've finished your graduate degree. You went beyond, and you're above average. Now, you know what? Let's go out there, and let's make a difference. Just you can make a difference. Just you. And with us all making a difference, we can, we can change the world. So again, I congratulate you, and let's just go for it. Let's go all the way. You can do it, and this, all of us combined can do it. So let's give yourself a hand for reaching your goal today. We're very proud of you. What an accomplishment. Let's see if I can get back on track here. Again, it's an honor to have with us today the Naval Air Technical Training Center Performing Unit and Mrs. Katie Lambert singing the National Anthem. Let's please stand for the Parade of Colors and the National Anthem.
And now Reverend Buford Lipscomb will bring the invocation. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we invite you to come into the proceedings of this great ceremony today to honor us with your presence. Lord, as we mark this very exciting and important event in the lives of all of these graduates, we thank you, Lord, for this, the 2011 Columbia Southern University graduation, marking this event as each of these graduates today cross the finish line in victory and receive their various degrees and honors today. Father, we honor them and their diligence, their sacrifice, and that of the sacrifice of their families alongside of them. Th their studiousness and studies and preparation, Lord, they have arrived at this important point in their life today. We remember and thank you, Lord, for the entire CSU team and honor them today, the staff, the faculty, the Mays family and their vision that has brought us to this place here today. And now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to come and to be present with us and among us, and we, our prayer is that you'd be honored through the proceedings of this great event today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Well, I have the honor of introducing to, my, to you my brother, the CSU President Robert Mays. Robert has been president since 2005, assuming this role after, after the unexpected death of our father. I can say with total confidence that he has done a supreme job of leading CSU these last six years. Robert is totally committed to CSU's mission and vision, which is to change people's lives through education and to enable them to maximize their professional and personal potential and serve the communities in which they live and work. Robert and I have worked together for now over 20 years, and I'm so proud of what he's accomplished and excited to see him continue to lead CSU into the future. Again, on a, on a side note, Robert is my best friend. We have. We're three and a half years apart, and of course, I always have to say I am the oldest, but I allowed him to run the university. <laughs> but I support him. He is for you, and he wants to make a difference, continue to make a difference in the lives of many, many people across the nation and the world. So join in me welcoming your president, Robert Mays. Thank you, Chantel. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone, and I want to especially thank our graduates for choosing Columbia Southern University. You had a lot of choices, and we're honored that you cho chose us. Um, since our 2010 commencement ceremony, which is held this same time each year, 5,826 students have graduated from CSU. With us today, between both ceremonies, 459 graduates are in attendance and 1,800 family members, friends, guests, and faculty and staff. So this is a, a very honored day and we are, we are so proud to have you here and so proud to hold this for you and to honor you. We would also like to acknowledge that this ceremony is being streamed live uh, across the web and across the globe, so we have a lot of others watching with us today as well. Uh, as you all know, today we're here to honor our graduates, to celebrate the years of hard work and determination that they've committed to earning the degree. Most all of them most likely have family, have careers, are juggling lots of events and commitments, and yet they pursued and earned a degree amidst all of that and all those obligations. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> CSU is also honored to be of all institutions in the country, number nine serving the United States military. Around nearly 40% of our students are active military in all the branches. I would like our military to please stand and let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> Thank you. One thing different about the CSU graduation is this is the first time that most of us, staff and faculty, have ever met face-to-face -face our students at Columbia Southern. 
So it's, it's a very unique event. Please take this opportunity to meet the wonderful faculty as well that are here today uh, that you've worked with through your program. I'd like to recognize where all our graduates have come from today. Again, we have, we have entrepreneurs, we have firefighters, we have law enforcement, we have military service members, we have business professionals, and you've all traveled from either different parts of this country or from different parts of the world. Please stand as I call out your state. I will call them out in groups of six. Remain standing until I finish the group and everyone is hold our applause until the last state of the group is called. Alabama, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Kansas. Thank you. The next group, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan. Thank you. Minnesota, Mississippi, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina. Thank you. Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas. <laughs> Second group is only three states, the last, one, last group, Utah, Virginia, Wisconsin. Now, before I go to a country that we have a student from, did I miss any states? Nobody? All right, great. The Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands. All right. Thank you. And then, um, one country where we have the most in attendance from is Vietnam. Would you all have students from Vietnam please stand? have traveled a great way. Thank you all so much. If I can keep this hat and all this stuff straight, it'll be a miracle, won't it? Okay. The CSU student active body is over 27,000 students and approximately 486 full-time staff and faculty are here to serve you along with an additional 265 adjunct faculty members all across this country. We also have 2,100 learning partners, which are organizations, municipalities, fire departments, police departments, different corporations that have joined with Columbia Southern University. And we are, we are so honored and blessed by what we've achieved. We could not have done it alone. It takes a lot of hard work, but it also takes God's favor and blessing. At this time, I'd also like to recognize one of our founders. Dr. Mays and Mimi Mays founded this university. Dr. Mays, as Chantel said, passed away in 2005. Mimi Mays, however, remains an inspiration and driving force behind the institution. Mimi, would you please stand and accept these flowers as a token of our appreciation. We also have with us today our Chairman Forney Howard and members of our Board of Trustees. Would you please stand and let us honor you. Now our faculty are who make this institution special. They are the ones that, have, that, that control that experience, that learning engagement that you have in the online classroom. Uh, they're sitting behind me and I believe we also have some sitting out on the floor as well. I'd like, I'd like our faculty to please stand and again take the time to make sure you meet them when the ceremony is over. Faculty please stand and let's give you a round of applause. Each year, 
We, uh, we honor one of our faculty members with the Robert G. May Senior Faculty of the Year Award. At CSU, we pride ourselves in offering an exceptional student experience, and we're going to want to go above and beyond what other institutions do. Again, this would not be possible without the faculty members who are committed to going beyond the call of duty to help our students reach their educational goals. The Robert G. May Senior Distinguished Faculty of the Year Award was established to recognize and honor outstanding achievements and contributions by a CSU faculty member. And I'm very proud to announce that the recipient of the Robert G. May Senior Faculty Member of the Year Award is Dr. Carl Beekman. Dr. Beekman was unable to attend this ceremony. However, Tracy Fries, Department Chair of General Studies, will receive it on his behalf. Tracy? Dr. Beekman could not be here with us today, so we, uh, we miss him, but he sent a few words uh, to share with everyone. Students and my CSU family, I'm humbled. I love what I do, and I look forward every day to log in and start working. Um, he says he feels that our major goal is to change teaching and learning approaches so that all students from diverse cultural groups will have equal opportunities to learn in a creative educational environment. He leaves us with a few words. I'll always think of you all with a warm and appreciative heart. You are very special to me and always will be. Continue to walk in beauty, Dr. B. Congratulations, Dr. B. Again, I'd like to thank you for choosing Columbia Southern. I also encourage you to make a difference, uh, to continue to go forward, and with all your might and will, take on whatever challenge it lays before you. My sincere congratulations to you all, and God bless you. Thank you, Robert. Again, how many of you know that you appreciate your moms and dads giving you that foundation? And if it wasn't here, if it wasn't for my mom here today, we wouldn't be here. So let's give those mom and dads a thank you. They give us that foundation that we need to move on. Well, today's commitment address will be offered by Dr. Marilyn Hickey. Founder and President, Marilyn Hickey Ministries, a nonprofit humanitarian organization based in Denver, Colorado, Marilyn is a powerful bridge builder for people of all cultures and backgrounds. She has traveled to over 120 countries and co-hosts a globally broadcast television show today with Marilyn and Sarah. Seen in nearly 200 countries and in 3 billion households daily. Again, Marilyn, she doesn't know it, but she was, was my mentor when I was 16 years old. I started reading her books, and my mom and I and brother, and uh, she's the reason that we had the courage to push on and continue the dream of changing people's lives. So uh, I am so excited to have her here personally, and I know that you will be changed after you hear her. So let's please welcome Dr. Marilyn Hickey. It's a great delight to be here. For one thing, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and it's cold. <laughs> nice to be here. And wonderful to celebrate, really, uh, graduates who've fulfilled a dream. You know, it's not an easy thing to get to the place you are today, right? So I want all of you who are graduating, just stand up for a moment. Exercise is good for you. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I know. I'm a miracle. <laughs> now you can be seated. <laughs> because you really are. You are a miracle. And this is such a miraculous day for you. And I celebrate it with you. But I believe I have a special message for your pathway now to miracles. Because we need to go from miracle to miracle. And dreams, visions are really what make us miraculous. You had a dream to graduate. And probably sometimes it seemed like a nightmare, you know, because when you're in the process of it, there can be a lot of pressures, a lot of difficult times with it. But you stayed in the process. You are in the pathway of the miraculous. And dreams and visions really are what put you there and keep you there and keep you in the supernatural. If you talk to street people in various cities and you say to a street person, where are you going? They usually say, well, I don't know. 
If you say, where would you like to go? I don't care. Where have you been? I don't remember. You say, what is the problem? No vision, no dream. Because visions and dreams give you direction. And I want to share with you a man that I read about and give you just four points on your pathway to the miraculous. Yes, you are a miracle today, but you're in a pathway of the miraculous. What is ahead for you? I believe something so wonderful beyond what you can imagine or expect. You are a miracle today, but you have miracles ahead in your future. Is that right? I believe that. Now, the man I want to talk to you about, his name is Joseph. And he had dreams and visions when he was 17 years old. And so sometimes we start very young, even as children, with a vision and a dream of what we would like to do. What is our future? What is our destiny that is so important? And so he had two dreams. And he told his dreams. He had 11 brothers, told his dreams to his brothers, and his brothers were not just happy. I'm going to tell you something. Not everybody gets happy about your dreams and visions, sometimes especially relatives. And so his brothers felt very put down by him. You said, well, what were his dreams? Well, he dreamt that the sun, moon, and stars bowed down to him, and he dreamt that sheaves of corn bowed down to him, and they felt very put down by him. Plus the fact his father, he was the second to the youngest, really esteemed him, gave him a beautiful many-colored coat, and put him over all of the family estate. And the brothers were jealous of him. And then he shares these dreams. And so Joseph goes out and becomes really the administrator over that estate, a very young man. And one day he came to his brothers who were out in the fields. And when they saw him coming, they said, well, here comes the dreamer. Because your dreams and visions don't always make you popular, but they are the supernatural part of you. And the first thing I would say to you, and I'm going to give you four points, is hold on to your dreams. Hold on to the visions that you have in your heart. So I'm going to ask you to participate again. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I will not let go of my dreams and visions. Now that's very key because in the process, some very challenging things can happen to you. And his brothers, when they saw him coming, were so jealous, so upset with him, they grabbed him, took his coat, threw him in a pit, and sold him into slavery. Now that can be like a nightmare. What are my dreams and visions? They're nightmares, but you hold on. Everybody say, hold on. You just don't let go, is that right? Because if you let go, you will let go of the supernatural part of your life. So he is sold to be a slave into Egypt, goes to a man who has a very high position in Egypt named Potiphar. And Potiphar sees something very special about him. He sees that he has ability. He sees his talent, that he can organize people. He can get uh, goals accomplished. So he puts him in charge of his estate. Now, how could Joseph hold steady here? He could have been so depressed. He could have had a pity party. Did any of you ever have a pity party? Did you notice nobody comes but you? And he could have had a pity party, but he didn't. And he did an excellent job for Potiphar. The second thing I want you to remember in your pathway to the miraculous is you must practice in all of the occasions and the processes of your life. Practice is so important. I have people who tell me, oh, I have this wonderful dream, I have this wonderful vision. Well, what are you doing? Well, nothing, but it's going to happen. <laughs> you have to practice. So put your hand on your heart again. Say, I won't forget. I have to practice in my pathway to miracles. And so that's in all kinds of situations and circumstances. And then while he's doing so well, being so blessed, and really, really blessing Potiphar's estate, Potiphar's wife is very attracted to him and tries to seduce him. And when he flees from her, she grabs his coat. This man loses more coats. But I can tell you, you may lose some coats, 
but if you hold on to your dream, you'll get some new ones. So he loses his coat again, and she lies about him. She tells her husband, he tried to seduce me. And so her husband believes her and throws him into prison. Now this is very key for you because not everything goes perfectly because this is not a perfect world. But if you will hold on to your dreams, hold on to your visions in challenging times, and keep practicing, everybody say practicing, I'm telling you, it will come to pass. You will see the supernatural part of what has been placed in your heart of vision and dreams. So here he is in a prison, and he really didn't deserve to be there at all. So he could have had his biggest pity party then, but he didn't. He began to organize the prison. I think that is just amazing. And he organized and organized, and he set goals. And the prison leaders, the people over the prison, said, look at this man. He has real talent. He has real ability. Let's put him in charge of the prison. What is he doing? Can you tell me, graduates? What is he doing? What is he doing? Tell me. He's practicing, even in a prison. Keep practicing. Don't ever stop practicing. Don't ever stop learning. That is so important. And then in the prison, and we're coming to the third part of the dream, and the pathway to the miraculous, two prisoners have dreams. And they come to Joseph and said, we had these dreams. Can you tell us the meaning of these dreams? And Joseph gives them the interpretation of their dreams. Now, in seeing your dreams come to pass, you will have to sow in the dreams and vision of others. In your pathway to the miraculous, you have to help others. You have to be a part of their dreams. Because when I saw this, I thought, wow, when I read this, how hard that would be. You can't get your own dreams to come to pass, and then somebody wants you to help them with theirs. But that's very key and very important. So the third thing I want to say to all of you graduates is so in the dreams of others. So put your hand on your heart again. You say, why do you make us do this? Because I used to be a school teacher. <laughs> say, I will never forget. I have to sow in the dreams of others. I must help others with their dreams. And so he does it. He shares with them and he tells the one man you know, you are going to be killed. You're going to die. The Pharaoh of the land of Egypt is going to kill you. But he said to the other man, you are the cupbearer to the Pharaoh or the king, and you are going to be restored to the king. And when you are, don't forget me. And it came to pass. The cupbearer was restored to the king. And he forgot Joseph. And Joseph is now 30 years old. Now this is very key for you today. I don't want you to forget this. Sometimes we give up our dreams because of time. We want things to happen in 13 months. 13 minutes would be better. 13 days would be marvelous. But 13 years? But see, don't let time steal your dreams. That's very key. Just hold on, because that dream, that vision, is going to keep you supernatural, keep you in the pathway to miracles. And one day, the Pharaoh has two dreams. And he dreams of seven very fat cattle and then seven skinny cattle. He dreams of seven full ears of corn and seven blasted ears of corn, withered ears of corn. Oh, he's so troubled by the dream. He doesn't know what it means. And he tells his cupbearer. He said, I don't know what these dreams mean. I wish I knew somebody who could tell me about my dreams. And the cupbearer said, oh, I know a man in prison. His name is Joseph. He interprets dreams, and it's accurate. So the Pharaoh said, we'll send for him. And Joseph goes before the Pharaoh. And when he gets before the Pharaoh, Pharaoh tells him his dreams. 
and Joseph gives the interpretation of his dreams. What is Joseph doing? He's sowing again in the dreams of others. Now put your hand on your heart. Say, I need to keep sowing in the dreams of others. And so he interprets the dreams. There will be seven very wonderful years of plenty here. The harvest would be wonderful, but then there will not be rain. And it will be a hard time for the people. So you store up in the seven years of plenty. And then in the seven years of famine, you have food for the people. And the Pharaoh said, that's a wonderful plan, but I need an administrator. And who has been practicing? <laughs> well, Joseph, he's been practicing. He practiced at home, practiced in Potiphar's house, practiced in the prison. Now he is ready, listen to this, to be the administrator of a nation. He would never have been ready for that at 17. He needed the practice. Put your hand on your heart again. I won't forget. I need the practice on the pathway to miracles. So for seven years, they gather up the food. And then the famine hits. But they have help for the nation. And all over that area, famine hits. Hard time. And it hits his family back in Canaan. They lived in Canaan. And they said, oh, we hear that Egypt has food. Let's go down and buy some food. So the father sends two of the brothers to go down and check it out. And Joseph is at the border of Egypt. And he sees his brothers coming and recognizes them. But his brothers don't recognize him. And he sells them food. And through a process of time, they come back, and he reveals himself. I'm Joseph. I'm the brother you threw in a pit. Look at my new coat. I'm the administrator of Egypt. And he rescues his family. He saved his family because of his dreams and vision. Who knows what families you will be a part of saving? This university, how wonderful it is. It's really saving families around the world. When I hear from Vietnam, I've been to Vietnam. I love Vietnam. When I hear of the nations, the military, all the things you do, really, through education, you're saving families. He saved his family because he wouldn't let go of his dreams. Who knows who you're going to save because you won't let go of your dreams. Now listen, here comes the fourth point. What's the first one? Tell me. Hold on to your dreams. What's the second point? Practice. What's the third point? Sow in the dreams of others. But here's the fourth one, and this is so important, because we must be people of integrity. Joseph didn't sleep with Potiphar's wife. He walked in integrity. And Joseph, the fourth thing, and integrity is so key, he forgave his brothers. You know, I said, if that had been my brothers and I saw them, I'd have slapped them a few times before I fed them. <laughs> but he forgave them. And he sent a message to all of us. The fourth thing is, we must forgive in the process on our pathway to miracles. Is that true? So this fourth point is so important. So put your hand on your heart again. You say, I'm wearing my hand out in my heart. No, you're not. Say, I must forgive. I must live in integrity. And then I want to just share this with you. I'm very involved in television. I have been for 41 years. When I got involved with television, I was a foreign language school teacher. I had no uh, education, no background. I just felt I was to go on television in our city of Denver. So I called our ABC channel and network, and I went down to see nine men on a board and, and to tell them I wanted to do a program on Sunday mornings for 30 minutes, and they talked to me. And then they said to me, you know, you're not television material. You would never make it. Why don't you go on the radio? Because you would never make it in television. But I had that dream. 
And so inside I thought, some way I'm going to be on television. And I'm sitting there thinking this, and one man spoke up. He said, I think we ought to put her on. I think she'll pay her bill. That was 41 years ago. None of those men are in television, and now I'm on television every weekday and speak to 2 billion people. It's not because I'm such hot stuff. It's because of the dream. That's the supernatural part of you. You cannot let go. And in that process, these are just simple things that I believe will help you in your pathway to the miraculous. You're a miracle today, but you're also in a pathway of miracles. I have a book called Pathway, Your Pathway to Miracles, dot com. You can get it. And I encourage you to get it. But I encourage you, most of all, don't let go of your dream and vision. You got here. You're here today because of dream and vision. But you're going to continue in dream and vision. True? Look at someone. Say, honey, this is really good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hickey, for that inspirational speech. Will the doctorate degree candidate please rise and come forward? President Mays, this candidate has completed all the requirements for the doctorate degree. His dissertation is titled, Reducing the Impact of Delays in Aircraft Development Projects. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that this doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and the approval of the board and the faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer you a doctorate degree and all the rights and privileges that come with it. Please move your tassel from left to right side of your cap as a sign of all this great achievement. And I congratulate and applaud you. I now present to you CSU's first doctorate in business administration graduate, Daniel Bruton. Master's degree candidates, please rise. <laughs> President Mays, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the master's degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the master's degree be conferred upon them at this time. With the authority granted by me by the state of Alabama, approval of the board and the faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree and all the rights, privileges that come with it. Please move your tassel from left to right of your cap as a sign of to all this great achievement. I congratulate and applaud you. Will the candidates for the master's degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma. Catherine Lambert. Yarley Sylvan Paul. Pamela Johnson. 
Leticia Carter. Patisa Ruffin. Ashley Pearson. Chester Rogers. Diana Atayan. Donna McDonald. Cynthia Jones. Felicia Hooker. Angela Harrison. Melvin Queenie. Michael Reese. Carmela Montgomery. Franklin Harris. Trevor Wright. Veronica Dixon. Alonzo Nambu. Jeff Freeze. Jay Van Court. Michael Chambliss. Laura Smith. Lisa Warren Likely. Fatima Robinson. Shatoria Eaton. Gerald Flowers. Ralph Brugueras. Sylvia Perrine Fonteno. Michelle Cole. Carlton Williams. Stephen Millard. Brian Kretz. Julian Kelman, Philip Sharper, Randy Franklin, Pernell Kenner, Glenda Rodas. Eric Hagedorn. Charles Dye. Tony Johnson. Simon Nongo. Ricky Myers. Patrick Rudolph. Katrina Suggs. Eric Hatfield. Nancy Robb. Michael Thompson. Joseph E. Hebert, Jr. Todd Baumgartel. Scobie Wilcoxon. 
Joseph Harrington. Patrick Ledoux. Mark Strader. Brian Kubiel. Samuel Owagheran. Rogers Goosh. Rachel Lawrence. John Lehman. Joe Morgan. Russell Aker. Shantae Russell. Terry Moore. Lynette Bumford. Astrid Kirkwood. Johanna Garcia Ramos. Craig Keys. Lisa Robinson. Jerome LeBlanc. Misty Williams. Marianne Felasinski. Brandon Schaefer. Carla Espino. Rory Burns Sr. Harold Jones. Simone Lewis. Jeffrey Grable. Sandra Behrens. Marius Aiklin. Sandra Tolliver. Rachel Westmoreland. Christy Bird. Winfred Shelley. Carmen Puente. Daniel Willis. Yomi Akinfoseye. Evelyn Anderson. James Mullis. Jerry Scott. Allison Hayak. Joshua Piercy. Bernard Dicker Jr. Chris Hubbard. Joanne Garris. Victor Bird. Wilhelmina Hook. Pamela Gar. Frank Babinek. Natasha Walker. 
Abigail Hutchinson. Daryl Thomas. Eric Bell. Lindsay Thiessen. Lakenya Brazelton. Shami Broom. Shamia Broom. April Tribeck. Joan Strayhorn. Francisco Trevino. Patrice McKay. W. LaPresse Washington. Dietra Giles. Melissa Reynolds. Arlene Gro. Kim Jones. Wilfredo Anderson. Akita Maxwell. Onitha Maxwell. Colette Taylor. Gary Kelly. Deborah Bell. Randy Waters. <laughs> Albert Mensa. Angela Grade. Annette Vickers. Harold Kruger. Jillian Mauser. Anthony Brown. Monisha Barnes. Kadisha Paquette. Adrian Lawan Cunningham. Ooh. Nguyen Nok Tiao. <clears throat> Trun Ti Hong Yuen. Do T Nock Big Nguyen T Tui Big Vo T Fung Yung Liu Nock Mai Lay Nock Ho Nguyen Nu An To Ho Ti On Nya Trun Yak Hai Nguyen We Fang Quang Nok Min Nguyen Tan 
Nguyen-Ti Ton Tak. Huyen Ti Fung Nya. Ha Tuyet Van. Ha Ti To Hien. Vu Nen. Lay ti mi. Kwa le huang. Nuo ten hai. Fung ti li hien. Vu Swan Twang Trun Viet Yung Let's give the graduates a round of applause, please. There are many stories setting out in the audience tonight, and probably the majority of the graduates tonight have someone to thank for assisting them as they came to graduation. A daughter or son who possibly you were not able to make an event, a wife's support in terms of taking care of business while you're doing your work for school. And tonight, I'd like to honor those family and friends by having the graduates stand up, face the audience, and applaud them, thanking them for their support. Thank you. In a moment, I'm going to ask the graduates to rise and face their loved ones and friends uh, and throw their caps in the tradition. But before we do that, there's uh, some business we need to take care of, and that's thanking those who planned this ceremony. Would everyone, staff, stand and raise your hand that helped in the ceremony? And let's thank them for making this a wonderful ceremony. Congratulations, graduates. This concludes our ceremony. Graduates, please stand and join in the time-honored tradition of tossing the caps. <laughs> please be seated. would ask that the audience and the graduates please remain seated for the recessional. Thank you. Once more, congratulations. How many of you graduates are ready to enter that pathway toward the mirac miraculous in your future? That Dr. Hickey has spoken to us. Well, let us pray. Father, we pray over these graduates and for them as they return to many states across this nation and other nations around the world. We pray, Lord, that through this ceremony today, Lord, as they have crossed that finish line into graduation and into victory, we pray, Lord, as they go back to their various places, that you would go with them and that you would be with them. Lord, that we pray, Lord, that their vision now would not to be just, just to make more money, but to make a difference in the lives around them, Lord. We pray, God, that you have inspired them as well as equipped them for your purpose ahead.
We pray, God, that you'd keep them and you'd bless them as they go now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.